What's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for logging on to 12news.com and the 12 News YouTube page. Time for a 12 Sports Triple Threat. Cameron Cox, Lena Washington, Luke Lynn. Guys, Avengers Assemble, right? Boom. Boom. There we go. Man. Yeah. We only practiced that like 17 times off air. All right, guys, what's the deal with the Suns? Final week of the regular season. Right now they are in the playoffs. Right on the line of the play-in tournament. Luke, how concerned are you with this team? I'm kind of right in the middle. I, you know, they had a nice little stretch, went in a few games, and they kind of blew it against the Pelicans at home on Sunday. Yeah. Kevin, Grant, Kevin Durant just saying it's a make-or-miss league. They just didn't make the shots that they normally do make, which is why they lost the game. Final four games of the season going to be very, very interesting. You have to, I think, win out to avoid the play-in tournament. They're tied in six with the Pelicans right now, although they do have a tiebreaker. Yep. Facing the Clippers twice and the Timberwolves, we'll really see – how prepared, I guess you could say, or mentally prepared this team will be for the upcoming postseason. Uh, we just have to wait and see those final four games against the Clippers. I hopefully, hopefully. Lena, your it. panic button, if I remember correctly, was like the All Star break. It was. Yes. So, and are you like, are you slamming the button now? What's the deal? Oh no, I'm, I'm, you know, this is time to deliver. Now that's what I call concerning volume three <laughs> okay, because just the way that this team played today. And it still wasn't enough, Cam. As you mentioned, the big three playing maximum minutes, and they were still not able to get over the hump with this Pelicans team. These are all playoff games, essentially, for this final stretch of the regular season. And they looked so consistent in the beginning of the year when Bradley Beal was just getting back. They strung together a lot of wins. They haven't really looked like that team since then, and that has been concerning. Around All-Star break is kind of when the wheels started to fall off. They've looked good and impressive in spurts. But is that able to be consistently delivered night after night in a postseason situation? I don't know. And again, I'm still traumatized from the way the last two seasons sure. have ended in elimination fashion at home in an embarrassing fashion, quite yeah. frankly. So I don't have a lot of confidence in how far this team will go when you look at the teams that are at the top and have been at the top of the standings for quite some time now. Very guys, up and down, I, right? Yeah, I think that's what comes to mind, Lena. Like, you just – we don't know where this team is at, and I don't think they do either. They got some of the most talented guys in the NBA. It just really feels like they're at the point now where some nights they flip the switch, other nights they don't, and they kind of live in this that line, this side, that side. It's, it's very confusing. It does give some deja vu of last year at times, you know, where you didn't know what to expect in some of those final round series in the playoffs, those embarrassing exits, to lose to the Pelicans. Like, you're, you can't convince me. When you look at those two rosters, you're like, the Suns, the Pelicans, that the Suns and Zion Williamson, who just played the game of his life, should beat this Suns team. I, I just don't get at it. At home, too. At, at right. home, I just, especially when they just knocked off the T-Wolves at home, who didn't even look anywhere close to a number one seed. It's a very confusing Western Conference. The Suns are just as confusing. I'll say this. If the team that flips the switch shows up, plays well, this team is going to be hard to beat in the playoffs, and nobody's going to want to face them. The only problem is I don't think they know when that switch flips or not. Even the fact that we are saying that Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, and Kevin Durant are in play-in territory yeah, when you it's look not at enough. the postseason in the West, in, even when you look at all the talent that's in this conference, that is just shocking to me, yeah. and I don't know if a lot of people even in that locker room would have predicted that right now. And would you guys, would you rather have them play the Timberwolves or the Thunder if they were to move past the playing tournament? Who would you rather see uh, the Suns face in the playoffs? So, Luke, I like that question. I would say the Timberwolves. I think the yeah. Suns are so better. The, the OKC is a little bit faster on paper. But to me, I, either one of those is fine because a team with Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, and Devin Booker have so much experience in the NBA and in the playoffs that they should be able to knock off a team that doesn't have that kind of experience Should whatsoever. is the operative word. Correct. Can they, though? That's the headache part. I need an Advil the size of a hockey puck. It's just to dissect this team. And the problem is when they played the Pelicans – Lena, you mentioned this. The big three played playoff minutes. You looked at the stat sheet. You were like, okay, this is how it's going to look in the playoffs. They played nine guys. There's the rotation. Mm -hmm. And it still wasn't enough. Very concerning. Good thing really it's not cool. a one-and-done situation in the NBA postseason. And yeah. really quickly, you look at the box score. They really did miss a lot of shots that sure. they normally do make. Booker, I think, was 0 of 6 from 3. Grayson Allen, 3 We've of seen 10. that in elimination games. If that kind of Suns team shows up more times than not in the mm. playoffs – it's going to be a short postseason run. Yeah, all right. Speaking of concerning, because that's apparently all we do here in Arizona sports, <laughs> yeah. uh, the D-backs yeah, coming off that sweep, getting sweeps, I should say, against the Braves. They are down starters. They are 
not pitching well on the bullpen side. Sure, help is on the way. It is very early. They're going to play 162 games. We have learned not to bury this team anywhere before August. <clears throat> Myself. You have yeah. learned yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me. So, Lena, we'll start with you. Your level of concern, what, well, 10 games into the season? Yeah, I knew this team was going to come down to earth after a sweep, uh, winning three out of four against the Rockies yeah. to open the season. But then you look ahead to the Yankees and the Braves. It's tough. And it's, it, we knew it was going to be tough. The way that they've lost some of these games, though, have been tougher to swallow. It's I just mean, like that, the Suns, old flashbacks. Exactly. Bad the, the, gifts the that come series, up again. Yeah, the series finale against the Yankees and that just fiasco to end the game. And then the way that this team, again, the bullpen blew it. That's another phrase and motto that we're going we were to. done with the bullpen. Groundhog yeah, Day, over yeah, and over. Exactly, exactly. And again, it's early in the season, so again, we could be eating crow in a couple weeks, months. They could mm. get hot. But right now, to start the season in this way, and again, you add the injuries, Alec Thomas, Geraldo Perdomo, uh, Paul Seawald, all these guys that have been instrumental in the success of this team, now having to miss some time, we know that they want to get healthy and they want to be out there, but yeah. you know you, ha you have to find that chemistry early to really find that uh, group that's going to continue sure. the success in the summer. Eduardo Rodriguez, too, as well. Luke, yes. how about you? Yeah, I mean, are, do moral victories exist? Uh, in At this point, in April? Sports? I mean, I, Maybe? I just want, I just want <laughs> to say... Not for the Diamondbacks when you're the National League champions. I, I just, I, it's early, like we were talking about. I'm, not, I'm really not that concerned, but the bullpen concerns are concerning. Uh, we know hopefully this doesn't continue throughout the entire season, but I do love the offensive output. I mean, they're swinging their bats, they're bringing in a lot of runs. You just got to on the back end, have the bullpen take care of business. And if they can solidify that, if, keyword, I think they'll be just fine. Long way to go. Offense has been great to watch, but the pitching, you got to tighten that up or we're going to be pretty concerned about this team down sure. the road if they can't do that because we've seen that in years past, right? We've seen the bullpen time and time again blow yeah. games, take the D-backs out of great opportunities when they should have won early, yep. not concerned, but they'll have, have to, to address it sooner it. than later. Yeah, they'll have to address it at some point. Luke, Jordan Montgomery made another start for yeah, Reno. Yeah. He's looking good. So help is coming. Erod should be back soon. Paul Seawall probably at the end of the month. Alec exactly. Thomas doesn't sound incredibly serious. Geraldo Perdomo, four to six weeks. So that's, that's tough because Jordan Lawler, remember, he's out to like September right. yeah. with an injury too as well. So a lot of things just kind of snowballing on the D-backs. Very different than in years past where they've started really, really hot, then kind of faded. This seems to be reversed, but as we know, no two seasons are ever alike. They got a lot of talent. But as always, you got to get healthy. And I'm not as concerned about games in April as I am sure. get about games in yeah. August. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Guys, we got about a minute left. Let's go around the horn real quick. Final four predictions. Luke, we'll start with you. UConn, UConn all the way. They have now <laughs> beaten uh, 11 straight opponents by double digits. A lot. They have been just on a roll ever yep. since last year. Uh, you got to take UConn. How can, it's going to be an amazing game. Purdue, sure. UConn, two bigs, kind of old-fashioned basketball, two big guys going at it. I just think UConn's the better team. Great run for both teams, including Purdue, but UConn gets it done. Yeah, so Alina? This is a matchup that I think college basketball fans wanted to see, arguably the two top teams for the last two seasons, two of the most talented big, big men going at it, and to see potential, some, to potentially some history with the Huskies. The last time a uh, program went back-to-back -back was in the mid-2000s with yeah. the Florida Gators. So, uh, But I can say that I'm going to probably go with UConn in this one. They were so explosive against Alabama, and the way that they just played on both ends of the their floor defense. was so impressive. Yeah. Their defense the blocks that they had. Uh, but I will say Purdue fans showed up and showed out they at did. least in the They're semifinals. So down it down. is like half the stadium at State Farm Stadium is Boilermaker fans, and you can feel them, you can hear them. We'll see how the Huskies and they sh how they show out on this big stage, but uh, definitely going to be an electric atmosphere. Cam, who you got? As Charles Barkley would say, just terrible. We're all three agreeing. Uh -huh. I'm going to go with UConn, but just to disagree with y'all. I'll pick Purdue. Luke, you go that way. I'll go this way. Okay? <laughs> Luke, go, go that way. We're done. Yeah. Thanks for watching.